So once you learn how to make a dumpling, you can like dump anything. Anything can be your dump. I don't know, right? Hello, here is a test shot. Let me know what you think. The eight at home solo mix dumplings, take one. No, wait, you can see it. Hold, wait, I think I moved the camera. Wait, let me send you this to make sure it's okay. Sorry guys. We're, oh, okay, so here we are back in my kitchen. Um, and today I'm gonna show you how to make some dumplings. I'm using lamb and scallion, but the original recipe is for pork. But the great thing about dumplings is you can kind of put whatever you have in there. So if you don't have the exact ingredients I'm using today, don't worry about it. It's more about like learning the technique and then you can stick anything in your dumps. How is that? Okay, so if you don't want to make your own wrapper, store-bought wrappers work really well. They come out really good. You can find them in most freezer sections, not just in an Asian grocery store. I'm going to start by measuring out my flour. So I'm doing a half batch of Claire's pork dumpling recipe. Oops, oops, oops. Whoa, that was messy. Hold on. I have to fix this. This is my flour container. There's no cornflakes in here. I just like vintage containers and stuff. Marshmallow Crispy Treat, that's a good one. 187 grams of all-purpose flour, um, which oh is one God. and a half cups. What's going on? It's an ice cream truck at Dan's house. Isn't this the dream, guys? So I'm just mixing it until it comes together in a shaggy mass. The dough's not gonna really come together in a ball, but all the flour is gonna get moistened. Shaggy mass. And I'm just gonna cover this and let it rest for 15 minutes. How's it going, guys? Good? So I'm going to start making my filling. I'm going to be using ground lamb um, because it's what I had in the freezer. You can do this with whatever ground meat you have. Um, lamb is nice and fatty. It's like pretty similar to pork, which I think it's a nice um, sub. Can we talk about this knife selection? <laughs> um, this is a vegetable knife. It's a shun. It has a delicate blade. It's not a cleaver. It looks like a cleaver, but if you tried to cleave something with it, it would, the knife would break. It's not meant for be used that way. Here, I'm slicing up one scallion. I'm going to put this into this bowl, and it's going to be for my dipping sauce. I didn't realize that cleave was a verb. To cleave? I assume to cleave means to... Cool. So I'm going to continue cutting these scallions. This looks like a whole lot of scallions, and it is. I'm going to run my knife through it. I want it to be... A bit fine. Ah, I lost a scallion. I feel like I need a bigger bowl. Pork's going in. I need about an inch of grated ginger. About a quarter teaspoon of salt. Uh, about a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Okay, I'm adding three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt and a couple of teaspoons of soy. You know what? I'm gonna stir it with this chopstick. I, I, they make it look like so easy to stir with the chopstick and then you get back in there and you're like, nah, I want, I want a spatula in here. Lamb filling, huh? Check it out. Okay, so my dough. Wait, I'm talking to that one. <laughs> okay, so it's my dough. It's only recording, right? You see, you see the red light. It's it's recording. So my dough has rested for 15 minutes. It doesn't look very different, but I'm gonna go in to knead it now. Just gonna... That's not open. <sighs> I broke it. Just a little bit to make the dough softer. Where's the lid? I guess I'll find that later. So we're gonna knead this until it comes together until it's like soft and supple and um, smooth. So you can see it's like really soft, nicely come together. It's not like a perfect smooth ball, no window pane, but that's totally okay. And the dogs are here. <laughs> I can hear them. Should we cut for the dogs? They're down here. There's dogs here, Ham's there. Today was my first day being actually alone because Ham is volunteering, making lunch for doctors. Lunch for hospitals. Healthy lunches. Today's dinner Healthy was, lunches. what was today? Turkey Salisbury steak with sweet potato mash and minted peas. So healthy. After this point, it needs to rest for about an hour. Okay, so this is the one that has rested for an hour and look at how it's like smooth and soft and supple it is. This is the other one, like this one's really soft and it's came together nicely, but after it sits for an hour, it's gonna look like this. Now that we are ready to roll, we are gonna dust, cut this in half. 
each one of these we're going to roll into a 12 inch log. I'm going to cut it off every one inch and then I will have uniform pieces of dough. You want to make sure the balls of dough that you're not working with you keep covered under a damp towel or it will dry out and get really gross. So you have like a cut side, you're going to put the cut side down and smush it with your thumb just to like get the round shape started and we're going to dust lightly with flour and start rolling. Oh, will you cut that? I normally like a French style rolling pin for everything, but these little dumplings, it kind of just puts too much pressure and smushes them. You could totally stop here, four inch dumpling, perfect, ready to work. But I like to cut them out just because I think it looks a little bit, your, your final crimped dumpling, dumpling will look a little cleaner if you take the time to cut them out like that, but it's totally, totally optional. Like nobody does that. That's just a me issue. If you're going to use these right away, you don't have to dust them with cornstarch. You can just lay them on a sheet tray with parchment. The cornstarch helps keep them separated without drying them out. So I'm going to throw this under the towel too. And the next dump, that looks so pretty guys. That's like so the worth the effort. Okay. Now we're going to form. I got, I went a little crazy with my starch, so I'm going to dust it off as I go through. I like to have more than, more than I need because I want to make sure they don't stick. Next, I'm going to add about a big teaspoon of filling right in the middle. And I kind of like it to be a bit of a football shape. So I've got my wrapper with my filling kind of on my fingertips on my non-dominant hand. <laughs> now I'm going to use my other hand to moisten half of the edge. Now we begin to crimp. You don't want to overfill because then you're not giving yourself any room to crimp. I hold on. I'll, I'll do another one. It's just, you know, once I get started, I can't like stop when this steams, the filling really plumps. It's going to look like it's not a lot of meat in there, but then after you cook it, you'll be like, yeah, that was enough. I feel like ham should do it because he's better than me. You can jump in. We'll swap after this. How to describe crimping. This is difficult. <laughs> pinch together, pinch it sealed. And then, and then you want to make a pleat over and then pinch it sealed, make another pleat. Yeah, you can't think about it so much. We're just making, we're just making dumplings. You just want to put stuff in there and seal it shut. Okay, I got my wrapper. Wool filling, moisten. Okay, this one's gonna be good. Nope, I tore it. This is the worst one yet, Ham. You know, I think this will be good. It'll make it really approachable to people, right? Watching you fail. Yeah. <laughs> gonna be okay. I'm mostly convincing myself at this point. But you know what? Even though they suck, look at how many bad dumplings I have already. They're gonna be delicious. <laughs> Can you tell us who this is, Sola? This is Ham, my husband. Show the people your secrets. Oh, oh, you're doing center first, then side folds like we were doing before. Yeah, that's probably better for this wrapper. Since these wrappers are super soft and they're really delicate, I'm, I'm making a, a focal point in the middle by pressing it together in the center first. Whoa, that and looks really making, good. These are good, guys. Cleats. So I'm going to start by warming up the skillet to about medium. And I'm going to give, wait, not give. I'm not giving it oil. <laughs> I'm going to add a couple teaspoons of oil to it. We need a little bit of fat to help it brown. So the number of dumplings you add to your pan totally depends on how much skirt you want. So I'll mix up my slurry first. This thing heats up fast. So for each half a cup, which is going to be good for a 10 inch skillet, I'm going to do a teaspoon of cornstarch and a teaspoon of flour. So I tested this with cornstarch alone and flour alone. Um, when you mix them together, it has the best crunch. I can't describe it. This is also going to get two teaspoons of vinegar. I want like a huge skirt. I want, I, I really like the skirt. If you like salt and vinegar Pringles, to me, it, it, that's what it tastes like. Do you like the skirt? I love the skirt. Haven't I been, have I not expressed how much I love the skirt? We want to wait until it starts to sizzle so we know that the pan is hot. Give this a good whisk because immediately the starches start to settle. You see that? Yeah. You don't really need the dumplings to be in there that deep. It takes about five minutes to steam, so uh, 
it really only takes a half a cup for a pan this big to give you enough steaming time for that. We'll come back to it. Should I cut? Ideally, you want to steam this with a glass lid so you can get a good look at, at how um, the evaporation's going. I don't have a glass lid. That's fine. You can look at it. You can peek. Oh, it's fine. It'll be fine. Okay, cut. Okay, so these have been steaming for five minutes. So they are totally cooked through. They've gotten really plump. The wrapper is cooked, the filling is cooked, and we're left with this like sticky, goopy looking stuff here. I'm gonna turn up the heat a little bit right now because now we're looking to get some color. While this happens, I can make the dipping sauce. So here I've got that one scallion I sliced up and saved, and I'm gonna add to it a couple tablespoons each of soy sauce, or I've got tamari here. If you don't have any rice wine vinegar, you can leave it out and just go with the soy. I like to add a couple spoonfuls of chili crisp for some heat. Oh, oh, black vinegar. If you have black vinegar um, and then mix it up and it's, that's your dipping sauce. When we get to this point where all the water is gone and we're just looking for color, you have to really like stand over it, be vigilant because one spot will go get dark on you before you even know it. You know, even though these weren't perfect, they look pretty good now that they're all cooked up, you know? Not perfect, but they're mine. I made them with my hands. It's so crisp and dried out now, I can just shake the skillet and, the, and everything's free. It's totally dry, crisp, now we flip. Okay, flipping is a little risky and you totally don't have to do it. You can just slide it out onto a counter and enjoy. But I want to see my crispy lace skirt, so I like to flip it. It adds a little danger, which is great, right? Okay. Everything could go wrong, but nothing went wrong. We did it. Oh, it's, it's good, guys. This is well worth the wait. Okay, so you can see the skirt is nicely browned and crunchy and crisp. What's not to love? We got all this crunch. We got all this texture. It's like a you get a snack in your snack. I always like the two-for-one thing, maybe because I'm cheap. Even Okay, if you don't want to make dumplings, if you don't want to make wrappers, if you don't want to make filling, you can get your frozen dumplings from Trader Joe's just throw a skirt on it, you're gonna feel so more, so much fancier. Like. Look at all that. Do you hear that? Listen to how crunchy that is. Okay, I'm gonna eat some skirt because it's the best. Okay, these dumplings had a rough start, you know, coming into this world. They're not perfect, but they're great. They're still, they're still so cute, and we made them. Dunking in. Mm. The filling is super juicy. You can really taste the scallion. It's not a lot of ginger, but it's still like coming through. And then the texture. You know, it, the best part about these dumplings is the texture. You get this chewy noodle from the part that steamed and then the crunchy part from the part that like had contact with the pan and then the super, super crispy skirt. You know, you can eat like a hundred of these. So good. Okay, I'm gonna have another bite. Oh, whoa. Take a look at that. Look at how crispy, chewy, crispy. It's got it all. Here, I'll cut one open. How did you learn how to do this? From the internet. I don't have a story about how my mom made dumplings with me. <laughs> <laughs>